Okay, welcome back. Look, I've got some uh, really cool things to show you. Uh, in the last video, I showed you how to do room layout and so on. So you would have seen me uh, going to this tool up the top here and then going down to here. And I chose my room layouts and I quickly spread them out so I could show you how to quickly do design. I use this tool up here. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of other things that we've got here. Uh, and I'm going to show you what they do. First thing, I'm going to get into my steel beam. So what I need to do is actually have a look at my structure. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go to my frame and I can see where I can place things and I'll also be able to see where I need to put in extra timbers or columns to hold up beams. So I'm going to go down to here and I'm going to choose a universal beam. You can scroll through these up and down arrow, do the same thing and you can go submit. You'll notice it's already put it on a layer. It's good because this works um, with our job scheduling as well, but uh, submit. And I go down to here and I can say I'm going to place my beam right here. <clears throat> I'll go to all and I can see my beam is sitting there I'll move this over to the left so we can see what's going on and I have the ability to change the length of the beam here if I want to and go apply or click enter and it'll change the size of the beam it also changes the weight of the beam and it and it, we can also change whether it's a galvanized beam or you know whatever it is we can also change the size of the beam so I can make this into a huge beam here and go apply and you'll notice the kilograms go up with the beam. If I don't know the length of the beam, I can simply click my scale tool, which is S, but the shortcut is over here. Right? Uh, I can simply go and scale my beam out to where I want it to go. The weight and the kilograms of the beam automatically left up. You can put notes in here and say over room or whatever it is, and they'll come out in your takeoff as well. <clears throat> okay? Right, there's several other things that I can do with this new tool and it really is going to save you a lot of time. Uh, I'm going to go and show you the HPM, the grand range. So that's the next one here, it's electrical. This is great, like I mean this saves a lot of time. Um, you'll notice that when you created your scenes before by using the scene tool here, that it actually came up with one called electrical. Right, so what this allows us to do is an electrical layout. Now that's a huge time saver and we can put these electrical fittings in anywhere that suits us. I'm going to turn my structure off because I wanted to clean it up a little bit. Yet if I did want to put power points and everything to suit studs I could do that as well by leaving it on. Is it existing or are we going to demolish it? No, we want these in as new and I'm going to go submit. I can now go and I can place in my model where I want my ceiling fans to go and I can choose several different locations. I've pushed control and move and I can now put ceiling fans in each room. If I go to my electrical layout you'll notice that I have a symbol there uh, for those which is great. What happens when I want to go and put in points to control these switches with? I'm going to go back to structure off and have a bit of a look around and I'm going to go into here and I'm going to choose say a power point. So I might go to say actually I'll, I'll use a switch and choose an RT or a switch. Now notice we come up with a new box here called drop to wall. What this allows us to do is to move walls around with switches in them. Okay, so first thing I have to do is select a wall, but if I forget and I click drop to wall, it says please select a single wall. So really what we're doing is we're telling it what wall we want it to go into. Okay, so I click on that wall, it turned blue, and now if I go drop to wall, it's giving me the ability to be able to choose the height and the length that I want it from the wall. So notice down here we've got heights and lengths. We can type those in if we want to. If we already had our kitchen in, which we'll show you shortly, uh, we can do that. Now these switches have got power behind them. Now pardon the pun, but if I click on these switches with my interact tool, I can now add a three or a four gang switch, which is cool in itself. And if I did a takeoff now, quickly do a takeoff of this model, and if I went to my electrical items, you notice that I have my ceiling fans that I put in there. I've got my three ceiling fans. But these switches you actually buy in separate <coughs> excuse me, items. So a cover plate, which would be your colour. And here you've got a four grid uh, switch. Okay, that in itself is a massive time saver, but there's something even more on top of that. If I go to here and go to edit my component and I click on it, <coughs> give this computer, computer a second and I click on that component and I go down to here <coughs> sorry guys, uh, I can adjust the height the rotation, so it could be vertical 
I can change it from rocker switches to electronic push button control. I can change it uh, the next one down to say a fan controller and I'll go apply. See what happened? It changed the actual switch to suit what it was that I chose. Now if I went back and did a quantity takeoff of this, here, it's a live takeoff and I go to my electrical appliances and I go down to my switches you notice that we've got um, we've got our push button dimmers and everything has changed we've got our rocker switches and these are the things you actually have to order separately to buy that it's very difficult to work that stuff out of especially when you're at concept stage but we can do it very very quickly now it's a great way to figure out what's going to happen we can move them around by using this tool here um, and we can even delete them if we, we choose uh, so it's a great tool and all of the range inside of there can be used very very quickly uh, PowerPoint switches and a lot of them have um, some really cool stuff about them so say I clicked on here and these are data points PowerPoints I'm going to go submit I'm not going to drop this one to a wall I'm going to simply just put it there and you'll notice that it's facing the wall automatically so I'll zoom in there and show you what's happening all right the thing is if I move a wall it's actually going to stop that from happening. I'm going to show you the first one I actually dropped in a wall and I'm actually going to move this wall around so I'm going to minimize this, it'll sit down the bottom, I can grab it back when I please I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to move this wall my PowerPoint stayed on the wall which just saves a lot of design time it's very quick and it's very easy to do I can now go and adjust my steel beam because it's going to be too long and so I simply click on it, use the space bar, S for the scale tool and move my steel beam back to where it goes. <clears throat> I'm working in 3D but I'm also working with structure at the same time uh, and I can see what's going on. Right? There's one thing that did also happen is if I go back to my electrical plan you'll notice that I now have symbols that are associated with the actual type of controller that I chose. So I've got a fan, I've got four switches and a dimmer. Okay, If I scroll up there and if I click on these they're interactive. Okay, I click to activate. Okay, Notice that, this, that the, the labels are changing according to what I'm putting in there. All right, And it's remembered that I, the last ones that I put in there. That's a massive time saver and I'm sure that electricians and builders and designers would love to have that functionality um, so by all means check it out uh, I'm sure you'll be as happy as it, with it as I am alright guys look there's more coming I'm going to show you kitchen benches I'm going to show you a whole heap of other cool stuff like right down to site uh, safety and so on alright cheers guys